Hi, hello and welcome from wherever you join me today. Are you looking for a movie review channel with a difference from somebody that will tell you all about the movie itself, including the facts, the fiction, and of course the trivia? Then you've come to the right place. I'm Jim Black from the Three Hats Stage Media Channel and this is an edition of Pause for Thought. I look at the messages from a favourite movie and see if we can use any of those insights in today's busy lives. As you can see from the light box just to my side, today's movie is from 2018 and it's The Keeper. The screenplay is by Marcus Rosenmuller and Nicholas Schofield and it's all about the life of Bert Troutman, the German goalkeeper that played for Manchester City. So let's get right into this review and find out more about the cast. So let's take a look at who's in this movie. What characters do they play and where you may have seen them before. David Cross is the lead character and he plays Bert Troutman. You'll definitely know him from The Reader as well as Gunter in Warhorse. He was also in My Brother Simple and Measuring the World. He was also in lots of German TV dramas and films in his early career. There's Freya Maver. She plays Margaret. And you'll know her from Sunshine on Leith, which is a previous review of mine, if you want to catch it after this one, as well as Skins. And she was also in a very interesting movie called The Lady in a Car with Glasses and a Gun. Now I'm going to review this at some point because I want to know why she's in a car, why she got glasses, and why she got a gun. Interesting questions those, don't you think? She's also going to be in something coming up soon called Industry 2020, so watch out for that in the near future. The John Henshaw. Now he plays Jack, and he's the father of Margaret. If you know him, he's a great British actor, been in many things over a few years. You might know him from The Grand. You might know him from Scylla Black the TV adaptation of Scylla's life, where he played her dad. You might know him from Born and Bred, and he was also in a movie, Stan and Ollie, with Steve Coogan and John C. Riley. There's Harry Melling. He plays Sergeant Smythe. Now you'll definitely know him if you go all the way back to one of the first Harry Potter movies, where he played Dudley Dursley. Obviously he was a lot younger then, and he's grown up quite a lot since. He was also in The Lost City of Zed, as well as an upcoming TV drama called The Queen's Gambit. So again, watch out for that in the near future. There's Dervla Kerwin. Now she plays Clarice, and she's the mother of Margaret, and the wife to Jack, of course. Now if you can go back to the middle of the 90s through to the early 2000s, you'll know her as Assumpter in Balakis Angel. She was also in Heart and Bones, The Stranger, The Silence, 55 Degrees North, and many more. There's Gary Lewis, and he plays Jock Thompson, the Man City manager. He was Billy Elliot's dad, in the movie version that is, as well as being in The Level, and one of us, to name but a few. There's Butts Ulrich Boos. He plays Rabbi Altman, and he's a major influence in Bert Troutman's life, but I'll tell you about that later in this review. The others in this movie are Michael Socker, Barbara Young, who incidentally started her acting career in 1957 and has been in many major things over the years, Dave Johns, Angus Barnett, Chloe Harris, Julian Sands, and there's a great performance by the actress that plays Barbara, Margaret's sister. And she's Olivia Rose Minnis probably one to watch out for in the future. So I ask, is it right? If you were somebody's enemy, could you become their hero? And does the past really matter if you weren't the cause of it? Let's get into this movie review and find out. If you were somebody's enemy, could you turn that around to become a hero to them? That's a very difficult thing to do. Those around you, close to you, 
They may not like you for a little bit, but you're certainly not their enemy in that sense of the word. People who think that you're the enemy may have got their ideas from others around them and taken on the prejudices that those people have, their thoughts, their ideas and their opinions. But how can you change all of that and become that hero in some way or another? Life is difficult as it is. Just to be yourself can be a trial at times. But if you keep going forward and onward, as always, then maybe you can turn those ideas around and become a hero. Always remember, you don't have to give to receive. I know that's a difficult idea for lots of us, and at times we all think like that. Maybe we should get something back for it. After all, we weren't the cause in the first place. So why are we an enemy to all those people? This story is about Bert Troutman. It follows his early life as a soldier in the war through to becoming the Man City goalkeeper and hero to everybody. So let's have a look at the story from the early days through to that FA Cup final that changed everybody's opinion in the whole world. Let's see the people he meets, the influencers, both good and bad, and how Bert manages to succeed through the adversity of prejudice and dislike of others about something that he had not really anything to do with. Let's get into this movie review and find out more. Since finding this movie a few weeks ago, and then watching it quite a few times, all in the name of research, honestly, it's become one of my favorite movies. Now it could be called one of yours, should you want to watch it after this review. I've left a link in the bio below, should you want to click through and find out more about it. It starts in 1944, end of the Second World War, and there's a battle scene somewhere in Europe. The Germans are defeated yet again, and all the ones that survive are taken into prisoner of war camps, which are all based around the UK. Bert Troutman is put in a prisoner of war camp in Lancashire, somewhere near Liverpool and Manchester itself. Now it's a difficult time. All the Germans are kept together and the English soldiers need to keep order all times. They've got to repatriate at some point. And as the end of the war comes and they start to retrain and re-educate the soldiers that they've got. Now it's a bit of leisure time for the soldiers, the German soldiers that is. They play a few games of football and we see Bert in goals trying to win cigarettes by keeping the goals out of the net. Well, it's not a net, but you know, it's goal posts. So what happens is Jack, the local grocer, he comes to the camp regularly to bring provisions. You know, things like silk stockings, cigars, tins of luncheon meat, all that sort of stuff that was important at that time. He sees Bert playing football. Now this is where we find out that Jack runs the local football team. And he's got a difficult job because they're not very good. And it's usually due to the goalkeeper that they've got at the club. So what's going to happen? He's going to take Bert on a trip. So he thinks. But he's actually going to get him to play in the local game that's about to take place on that day. He wants to disguise the fact that he's a German because again, many people are prejudiced to the Germans at this time. Things went on that shouldn't have gone on. But that's war. We all lose loved ones, friends, homes that we live in, businesses, and life changes for everybody. So it's not a good time. We'll all get through it, as we always do. At the game, we discover that Bert tells everybody that he is a German. There's resentment straight away. But, you know, they're going to get relegated. So what can they lose? Obviously, Bert plays in goals. The game is won. 
and that's a game nearer to not getting relegated. There's going to be a few more games and Jack has to keep taking Bert backwards and forwards. Now, like I said, the end of the war has been declared and the Germans must be repatriated. But this can't happen because we need Bert playing in goals. If he gets repatriated, we'll lose the game because the old goalkeeper will come back and then we'll get relegated. And we can't have that. So Jack takes it on himself to invite Bert into his home and treat him like part of the family. He's already got him working in the shop and he's already thinking that this could be a good thing, especially if they don't get relegated. Are you following me so far? I told you that Margaret is the oldest daughter of Jack and Clarice. They've also got Barbara, the younger daughter. Now Margaret and Bert have a thing going on. You can already see it. There's already something cooking, but we'll later find out what happens. Now it's the day of the big game, the final game of the season, and they must win to not get relegated. Now word about Bert has got round and a guy called Jock Thompson, who happens to be the manager of Manchester City, comes to see him play in the final game. At the end of the game, yes, they win, and the relegation doesn't happen. And Jock decides to talk to Bert about his future. It's the final day, he's about to go home, and this can't happen, because if he goes home, he'll lose all that opportunity that he's being offered. Next thing we see is a big party, and it's all in celebration of Bert. They've prepared him a hamper, they sing him a German song, they drink lots of beer. But there's also an altercation with the captain of the football team, who just happens to be the boyfriend or fiancé of Margaret. He knows what's going on between the two of them. He knows the looks they're giving each other and things like that. So he has it out with him. And Bert tells him that, you know, whatever's going to happen will happen. The story moves on slightly and we find here that Bert and Margaret have got together. And yes, they've got married. And it's a great time for everybody. But there's still that underlying feeling that things could go wrong because of the end of the war and people's feelings are running high. We get to the day, a little bit further on in the story, I think it's about 1949, that Bert goes to Manchester City. He's already had his trial and it's the day of his signing. He's presented to all the reporters in the room. Now this goes okay for the start, but then towards the end of the questions, there's allegations about his taking part in the war, the fact that he signs up and he wasn't coerced into it, the fact he got an iron cross, and all those sort of things. And we see the next few days and the next few weeks where he's playing games of football. He's booed on the pitch. Now, could you go out in front of all those fans and get booed? It would be horrible. It would be horrendous. How do you think you would play? Well, he plays indifferently, like I said. But what happens is there's a meeting and they all want to get rid of him. He's not at the meeting, but his wife, Margaret, and his father-in-law, Jack, turn up. Things are said. Hostilities. Feelings are running high. Rabbi Altman is there. And as I told you a little bit earlier, he plays an important part in the story. He listens to Margaret tell everybody that she's proud to be married to him. Bert is a person and he needs to be given a chance. He's not responsible for the whole of the war. And many of them weren't. They just took part, like the British, like anybody on any side. You sign up and you fight for your country. The hostilities are still there. The booing still goes on. But the next thing we find is that Rabbi Altman writes an open letter to the Manchester Evening News and everybody reads it. It says that we must give everybody a chance. We're all not responsible for the things that happen in the greater world. We might be a part of it, but there's different reasons for that. After the open letter, things begin to get a little bit better. There's the birth of the son, John, to Margaret and Bert. And this is a very happy time. We see him growing, we see him getting stronger and older. Now the story's moving on here and we're getting towards 1955, that sort of time. And this is the first FA Cup that Manchester City play and they lose. Another year goes past. And again, Manchester City end up in the final of the FA Cup 1956 against Birmingham City. Things couldn't be happier at this moment. 
Will Manchester City win? What is going to change? Something is about to happen that would test all of us yet again. Bert is playing in the game. There's 20 minutes to go. Man City are already winning. And there's a terrible collision between one of the players of Birmingham and Bert in front of the goal. Something happens to Bert's neck. He gets up and tries to play on. You can tell he's in pain. He carries on, he carries on. And yes, Man City win the cup. It's a great time for everybody. Things couldn't be better. They've won the cup, but Bert's neck is a problem. What could have possibly gone on there? An x-ray at the hospital a few days later, because he did soldier on for quite a few days, finds that Bert broke his neck in a few places. And when people find out about this, the people believe that Bert is the hero that he should have always been. While Bert is recovering in hospital, lying there with his neck braced so that it doesn't move and it can repair, he's contemplating the past. He's haunted by things, things that went on in the war that maybe he could have changed if he'd tried that little bit harder. There's a boy with a football that runs through the story and he keeps seeing him in different situations, usually when things are getting on top of him. When he's on the road to recovery, and we're in about 1956, late on, he makes a phone call home. This is one of the saddest parts of the movie, yet again. There's an ice cream van. John, the son, wants one. So while Bert is on the phone to his wife, he goes off out to the road to go and get one. A car comes along and doesn't see him. And very sadly, little John gets killed. Like I said, it's a very sad part of the movie. We see the burial in the graveyard and we see Bert dealing with many demons. He forgets that Margaret has demons too. All the things that she's had to go through and she's just lost her child. A very difficult time. Bert believes it's all his fault for things that he's done in the past. But that can't be true. Because why would you be punished and those around you? We see another very poignant scene at the graveyard later on where Bert is visiting his son's grave. Sergeant Smythe turns up. He didn't have a very good time with Sergeant Smythe back in the prisoner of war camp. Sergeant Smythe is there visiting his wife and his two children's grave. They were killed in the Blitz over Manchester a few years ago. There's a little bit of a fight scene. You know, it's one of those moments that they're using in the movie to try and get Bert to refocus and regroup. And at the end, we find that Sergeant Smythe wants him to carry on, become the person he can be and the hero he's turned out to be, because people need that sort of belief to be able to get on with many things. We're moving towards the end of the movie, and there is no spoiler alerts in this one, because it's a simple story, and it's a very moving story. It's inspiring as well. And I suggest that everybody that can, goes out and finds it and watches it. And then put your comments in below and see if you think I'm right. The end of the film comes and there's a great song that Freya Maver sings as the part of Margaret. And it's Abide With Me. It's a great version. And you should watch it just for that. We see them dancing slowly and the graphics and the text come up on the movie and tell you all about the life of Bert and the life of Margaret. They went on to have two more sons and he went on to play many times for Manchester City. Like I said, he became a hero to many and we can all become heroes and not just enemies. Look at those around you. Think about things that you say and do. Try and change your attitude. It doesn't cost anything. It's difficult to do. I can tell you that now. Thoughtfulness, caring, being kind, listening to each other. Always my advice. And don't forget the end of every story is the beginning of a new one. So let's now look at the trivia. The trivia is one of the favourite parts of the movie review. 
I just love telling you interesting facts. Did you know, for example, that the Belfast football team Glen Torrens Stadium was used for all the exterior shots of Main Road for Manchester City's ground? They used it because it still looks like that today, whereas Manchester City's ground has been knocked down and turned into the Etihad Stadium. Many of you will know it if you watch English football. Did you also know that the street scenes for the later part of the movie, where Bert is playing for Man City, at Ulster Street, Lurgan, Northern Ireland? And the outdoor shots from when it was in the war were from Munich and also Ansberg in Bavaria in Germany. Bert Troutman played 545 games for Manchester City and in a 250 match consecutive run he only missed five games. That's very good for a footballer of any standard from any era. But what I also found out was that in 1949 against my team Derby County he let in seven goals. So thanks for that Bert. Bert Troutman was also the first foreign player to receive player of the year. Did you also know that Bert Troutman is one of the only people to receive the OBE from Great Britain as well as the Order of Merit from Germany? He's also the only man in the world ever to hold the OBE and an Iron Cross at the same time. After Bert's last match the goalposts were removed by the fans. Now you might find this a little bit unusual and what we're going to do with them. But what it was, was they believed that Bert Trauma was the greatest goalkeeper Manchester City had ever had. So therefore, nobody else would ever be good enough to stand between the posts that Bert Troutman stood between all those years. What a great tribute, don't you think? Bert Troutman died at the age of 89. In 2013, he became the greatest goalkeeper of all time, many would say. And he became a hero when he was many people's enemies to start with. And he is a lesson to us all that we can all follow. The music in this movie is really good. All the instrumental music is written by Gerd Bauman. And as I said earlier, Freya Maver sang Abide With Me, which really is a good version if you want to catch it. Blue Moon is by Lisa Hannigan, another great version of an old song. The movie plays out with Noel Gallagher singing The Dying of the Light. It's a great little track and you should download it sometime and listen to it. I hope you've enjoyed this movie review. I've left some links in the bio below to where my thoughts and inspirations come from. If you click on them, they'll take you for a closer look. If you want to join our community, please subscribe by hitting that button and strike that bell if you want to know when we upload again. I very much appreciate likes, so give me lots of those. And if you want to leave any comments, drop them below and I'll get back to you as and when I can. I've been Jim Black for the Three Hats Stage Media channel for this edition of Pause for Thought. I hope to see you again soon.